A very good day to you and welcome to the Real Estate Show proudly brought to you by Rawson Properties Zimbabwe. And thank you to everyone who's joining us wherever you are in the world. The Real Estate Show is a program where we talk all things property. You know, um, I know that there are lots of you out there who are deciding on which property to buy, how to go about it, and you know which are the right companies to reach out to to make them your official partners when it comes to purchasing a property. Well, uh, because Rawson Property is making a big difference, I would definitely advise that you uh, join Rawson along this journey that is making a difference, especially when it comes to the property world. Today, we're going to be discussing about why real estate matters. We are looking at the purpose in investment and also in the family setup. COVID-19 made a big difference, especially at how real estate companies also look at how they're selling properties and how you purchase properties. And of course, I'm not the expert in studio today. Uh, to join me for this conversation, I have with me Francis Shinjekure, who is from Rawson Properties Zimbabwe, and he's a research analyst. A little later on, on, we'll have a Prosper Shitambara, who's a finance expert and economist, to talk a little bit about how real estate has been tried and tested and is an ideal investment for each one of us. Thank you so much, Francis, for joining me for this conversation. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, Francis, um, we obviously want to talk about the importance of real estate and you being a research analyst. Let's take a step back and go back a little bit um, to COVID-19. What did COVID-19 or what did the COVID-19 pandemic um, affect uh, the, the sort of flow of the real estate business? Okay. Thank you so much for the question. And uh, real estate is an integral aspect in mm -hmm. our livelihoods, in our day-to-day -day business activities. I think for every business to operate, they need some premises right. to operate from. Uh, in terms of uh, a family, and I think having a roof over your head gives you uh, comfort, mm. gives you peace of mind. I think in addition to that, um, uh, it uh, helps you in uh, value creation, wealth yep. creation. It's a legacy as well that you can leave for your family. Uh, looking on the investment side, I think real estate can be a good investment mm -hmm. for retiring. Uh, it can earn you income as well. And I think for businesses as well. As well if we look uh, at uh, tourism, if you be it tourism, be it uh, uh, manufacturing, yeah. be it uh, uh, commercial, that's your office and your, your retail. I think you need some premises to operate from. And if we look at how COVID-19 affected all that, I think um, all of a sudden things sort of came to a halt. Mm -hmm. I think it affected everything. It affected uh, the tenant's capacity to pay rent, which affected the investor at the end of the day because yeah. they, they, they lost some income. Uh, then as well, COVID-19, I think he, he, in terms of how it affected, uh, based on the subsectors, it affected mostly on the tourism industry right. because I think the uh, movement of people across borders, it, was, it wasn't allowed anymore. So it means in terms of tourists, we couldn't receive tourists anymore. Yes. Uh, then I think uh, followed by office because people were not allowed to go to offices. Some sectors were classified as the essential services, that's your manufacturing, uh, that's your retail. Mm -hmm. I think to some extent they were uh, less affected. Then uh, looking on the development side, I think it uh, affected mostly again because uh, I think people were not expecting that. Mm. And I think projects that were on the pipeline were affected. People were starting to think, uh, should we proceed with this development? Yeah. Does it fit into the future that's affected by COVID-19? Or do we have to think afresh and start again? Or do we have to project to, toward the project? Okay. Uh, I think, yeah. All right. I think that's quite interesting. Um, you know, besides the fact that most people were now working from home, which means most buildings were left empty yes. and, you know, the owners of those buildings obviously ran a serious loss. Yes. But just as well, because of the, you know, economic crunch during that time, a lot of tenants were also uh, failing to pay uh, their rentals in time or failing completely. How did this change the mindset? As a research analyst at Rawson, what did, how did you start changing your mindset towards what real estate should be looking like? Or was there a shift? 
Yeah, I think everybody was shocked yeah, given what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody was afraid of the future. People were talking about working from home and we all yeah. thought and believed that as we said, it's going to crash at some point. Mm. Uh, but I believe you me, we came out strong more right. than we believed. If you look at uh, everything at the moment in terms of uh, what's happening, I think across all subsectors, you would realize that there's more development that's happening yes. uh, compared to what was happening even uh, before COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You would realize as well that even in terms of renders, uh, I think we are achieving even more higher renders than we were yeah. doing before COVID-19. If you look at uh, 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 even uh, looking at our uh, city, even Harari here, you could see that in terms of expansion, it's taking, uh, it's expanding at a f uh, much faster pace than it did mm -hmm. uh, before that. I think uh, before we had um, uh, Noton, we had uh, Rua, we had Ishtungu, is uh, branching out from Harari. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it now, I think almost in between those cities, it's getting built up. Right. If you look at it, we are having a new seat in Mount Amden as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are even, we are going even as far as Nyabira. Yes. There are developments that are coming up from there. If we look even at tourism that was highly affected, if you look at it now, I think in the past two or three years, we have mm -hmm. uh, new additions of hotels in Victoria Falls, mm -hmm. about two or three or so. We have a hotel that's been under construction at the moment here in Arar as well. Uh, I think if you just go around as well, you, you realize in terms of even the office space, uh, there's a lot of developments that are coming up along uh, the major roads, your Samora Marshall, your Second Street Extension, your Liberation Legacy Way, for my mm. Road, you know, your Church Hill, Avondale area, Eastleigh, yeah. everywhere there's a lot of construction that happening in terms of office. Mm -hmm. Then in terms of retail, I think we've seen new additions as well, your Highlands Park. Yes. Uh, you think um, along Chiremba Road, I think there's another development that came up mm -hmm. even after COVID-19. So I think we, we even came out strong and we are getting strong by the day as well as a center. That's, that's quite interesting. And you actually say the developments have grown post-COVID-19. And, you know, we have a lot more people purchasing houses and corporates purchasing buildings as well. Why do you think this is when we're going back to unlocking value, having the discussion around the value of, of real estate? Why is real estate such um, a big lucrative uh, sector or market? I think it comes from... It is an asset class perceived as a, a perfect hedge against inflation. Right. Um, it may be perceived in not a good word for that. I think it has proved over the years. I think if you look at our economy, I think for the past four decades, we have gone through uh, recurring periods of inflation, mm. recurring periods of economic downturns, uh, recurring periods of uncertainties. And I think over the years, um, some uh, investments in money markets have lost value value almost got wiped out, right. but real estate uh, managed to stay this ground. Uh, it's a tested and, and uh, uh, trusted way of preserving value, mm -hmm. way of uh, earning income. Uh, so I think, yeah, in terms of individual and corporates yeah, going forward, we are going to see a lot of focus, even in traditionally non mm -hmm. real estate companies, we are going to see a lot of focus changing, uh, trying to have a piece of cake in the market as well. Right. So um, if, I mean, obviously we have lots of people, uh, Francis, that are watching and um, looking at, you know, real estate in the family setup as well. Because, I mean, when people look at real estate, they sometimes look at the, you know, the big corporates that are building, you know, the cluster houses or the big buildings and the malls. Let's, let's maybe come back down to the family setup. Why is there so much value in real estate, especially for the family? I think for the family, first thing, like I mentioned before, mm. it helps you to have the comfort, to have the peace of mind. Right. Just uh, owning the property that you live in, having mm -hmm. a roof of uh, your head. Mm -hmm. It helps to manage your costs. You know, Rendao is one of the biggest uh, cost components in terms of people's livelihoods at the moment. Right. So it helps you in managing that cost. It also um, helps in building legacies, in yes. creating wealth, in uh, uh, retirement, and in some income. Uh, I think as well, it can help in terms of unlocking value for mm -hmm. your investment as well. Because you can borrow against your property and invest elsewhere and uh, make even more money from yeah. there. Uh, so it's important, I think, in that aspect. And uh, I think uh, more even now that there's a lot of uh, development that's happening. If you own a real estate, I think it helps you to even 
unlock more value. Mm -hmm. For example, if you own a property that's on a good location, that's on a strategic location, yeah. you can sell it for for a, a higher price. Mm -hmm. You can then invest in a home and another investment property that ends you income. If you've got a piece, bigger piece of land, you can still subdivide. Uh, you can still subdivide and sell a certain portion, then you earn your income as well. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And lastly, uh, before we get into our short break, what is the future of real estate as you said, as a research analyst? Obviously, I know that your key job is to look at, you know, a projected of a projection of 2024 or the next five years. What is the future? I think Zimbabwe is a, is a, is a, is a developing country, right? which means there's a lot of uh, opportunity in terms of uh, uh, investment and development. Mm -hmm. It means they are, and in the next five years, I see a lot of opportunities that are still going to come up because as I mentioned earlier, only we have our cities expanding. It means we need more services. There. Yes. We need more retail services. We need more uh, production in our industries to cater for the growing economy. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, you're looking at our population uh, in terms of growth, from 2012 to 2022, yes. it grew up with about 16.2 percent, which mm -hmm. is about 1.5 percent per annum. Right. It shows our population is growth, so it is growing, and demand for services, demand for housing, demand for everything, and almost all those businesses operate uh, in some form of real estate. So it means our industry is going to grow mm -hmm. even more than what's what's happening at the moment. Thank you so much. Well, that was Francis Chinjekure from Rawson Property Zimbabwe. He's a research analyst and saying, as I look ahead in the next five years, we definitely can see that real estate is growing within the Zimbabwe market. As much as Zimbabwe is a developing country, our cities are expanding and it is definitely making a big difference. We're still continuing the conversation on why, why real estate matters and then also looking at how real estate is a tried and tested way to maintain value. After the short break, we'll have Prosper Chitambura, a finance expert and economist, talking to us about why real estate is the real money. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Real Estate Program, proudly brought to you by Rawson Properties Zimbabwe. And of course, today we were talking about why, why real estate matters and why it's uh, important that you understand uh, its value, uh, not only looking at the corporate setup, but also looking at the family setup. And just before the break, we had Francis Chinjekure, who is from Rawson Properties Zimbabwe, and he's a research analyst. And right now, as we had said, before the break, I have with me a finance expert and economist who's going to tell us why real estate is the place or is the real deal where you should actually be putting your money. Uh, Prosper Chitambara is our finance expert of the day. Thank you so much, Prosper, for joining us. Thanks for How are me. you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Mm. Prosper, let's talk about how real estate has been tried and tested over the past uh you know, 40 years of independence and it has, you know, uh, you know, st stood, stood the, the test, test of time. Of time. Yeah, um, yeah. We obviously know that there has been instability in uh, of the financial markets in Zimbabwe, but we see that real estate keeps growing strong. I mean, just before the break, we were talking about the impact of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and post COVID-19, we're still seeing real estate growing more than ever before. Talk to me a little bit about this. I think you need to look at it from the context of the macroeconomic stability, right. instability rather, mm -hmm. that the economy has actually gone through, uh, characterized obviously by the chronic inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously for many investors, uh, real estate becomes a very viable option. Right. Uh, because most of the investment options and classes have been uh, decimated by the chronic inflationary uh, trend. And of course, we've been in this uh, for, a very, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, real estate has been found to assist in terms of preservation of value. But ultimately, what any investor wants, for it's not just preservation of value, but preservation of value is the basic mm -hmm. uh, or fundamental requirement. Yeah. Then, of course, you also want a fair return on investment uh, or on your investment. Mm -hmm. So real estate has actually provided both uh, the preservation of value in a chronic inflationary environment yeah. and also 
uh, allowing or enabling any investor to make some fair return on investment yeah. or, or on his income. Yeah. So, That's quite interesting. So, so the demand, obviously, for real estate continues to increase. Mm -hmm. course, it's not just locally. Uh, on, uh, in South Africa, uh, on the African continent, and, of course, globally, the yeah. trends have shown that uh, the demand for real estate also as population increases. Yes. Uh, and as economies uh, improve, uh, that creates a lot of demand for, mm -hmm. for, for real estate. Yeah. So the demand will always be uh, upward or okay. increasing and increasing demand right. fun function. Yeah. Right. Um, Prosper, uh, talking a little bit about assessing the future role of real estate, especially in unlocking value, going back to what you were saying that it's not only a Zimbabwean trend, but it's a global trend where people yeah. have actually unlocked real value when it comes to real estate. Mm -hmm. um, let's maybe come back to the family setup and going to the corporate. Why do you think it's so important that people see real value in real estate within the family and um, in corporate as well? Well. I think within the family, obviously, when you look at the structural changes that have taken place yeah. to our economy, uh, characterized by uh, high informality, obviously that has adversely affected uh, a lot of uh, individual households. Mm. Uh, of course, businesses have also been affected. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are seeing a new, new trends towards uh, growing uh, informality. Mm -hmm. Of course, that creates a lot of dynamics, opportunities, and also even challenges mm -hmm. uh, for, for players uh, within the sector. Right. But of course, for the households, I think it becomes important to, as a way of um, ensuring that you are able to uh, provide obviously for 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 your household mm -hmm. for 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 your family if it's a family and also for for corporates uh, it's so it's also it also becomes an opportunity for the the corporates to be able to preserve a bit of their value to preserve their balance sheets uh, their, right. their asset bases yeah right so for both households and corporates i think it becomes critical uh, mm -hmm. to unlock a greater value uh, from real estate through uh, looking for uh, unique opportunities that are best suited for their own financial requirements, for their yeah. own financial needs, and be able to actually take advantage of that. Right. And uh, I, I'm sure the market provides uh, uh, different um, asset classes or, uh, within real the broader real estate space yes. uh, for households and for even for corporates to be able to take advantage of. Mm. You know, when uh, you're talking about um, each individual or family or corporate looking at unlocking value mm -hmm. and looking at the different opportunities, as a finance expert and e economist, what are some of the opportunities that you're seeing right now post-COVID-19 within mm -hmm. our real estate market? I think we've, we've, we've been seeing growing demand, obviously, for the residential right. the subsector. Uh, I, I think with the trends now, uh, more we are seeing more teleworking even for those that are still uh, formally employed. Mm -hmm. So obviously that creates a lot of demand for for the for the residential sector, so sub sector. Then also, uh, it's the suburban office space. I think that's an area where there's also been growing demand, uh, given some of the challenges we've seen, especially with the CBD, mm -hmm. uh, the crowding, um, and um, uh, uh, the rising obviously cost uh, also even of uh, space within the CBD. Right. So I think that has inspired or motivated some uh, corporates mm -hmm. uh, to go outside the CBD. Okay. Uh, I think it's more convenient to be in a suburban uh, area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, so I think those are areas where we are also seeing a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're also hoping that with uh, the reindustrialization re of our economy, uh, we should also be seeing growing demand for, for the industrial sector uh, mm -hmm. as well. What have been some of the challenges? I mean, obviously, as we said before, going back to the history of Zimbabwe in terms of instability of the financial markets, mm -hmm. in real estate, what are some of the challenges that we have seen that have been linked to this financial instability? Well, it, then affect, it, it affects occupancy rates. It yeah. affects even the capacity mm -hmm. of tenants to be, to, be, to be able to pay uh, rentals mm -hmm. uh, when when the uh, economics uh, the economics is not functioning optimally uh, when there is high inflation it actually affects uh, the cost structures uh, right. by especially by the by, by the tenants so mm -hmm. some may actually fail to pay mm -hmm. which then affects the rental incomes uh, and uh, the occupants uh, levels or rates may also increase mm -hmm. as 
some or those that fail to pay may have to seek for alternative uh, space uh, elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And w when we... And also, obviously, yeah. the, the fact that we are now highly informal, I think that also presents some challenges yeah. for, the, for the formal sector, real estate uh, players. I think mm -hmm. the growing formalization, uh, yes, it's a, it's a big challenge for those that are formally uh, or doing things formally. Right, Prosper. L lastly, let's talk a little bit about creating uh, resilience within the real estate sector, of course. I mean, we have seen the ups and downs of our economy. We've seen pandemics come and go that mm. have obviously affected uh, mm. the sector in different ways as well, even though it came back stronger. But as a, a finance expert, what would be your advice, especially to those that possibly want to get into uh, real estate investment um, so that we can sort of protect ourselves against these uh, certain shocks that come along the way? I think there are a number of factors that need to be looked at. But ultimately, I think resilience within the real estate space or sector, I think is also a function of the resilience of the overall economy. Right. So I think we would want to continue to advocate for policymakers to put in place policies that ensure there is greater stability. Mm -hmm. Then also providing greater clarity and certainty around the issue of the currency. Right. Because that also then affects investments within the real estate sector. Uh, currently, I think there's a lot of uncertainties mm -hmm. in, with respect to whether we're going to continue with the dual currency framework or government right. is going to de-dollarize. Yes. And uh, from uh, conversations I've had with players in the sector, I think the, the, the dual currency framework, in particular the, the USD, has provided a bit of resilience yes. and stability, which has enabled uh, players to actually invest a lot uh, within the, that sector. So. Uh, these uncertainties could actually affect that, that investment. Right. So there has been a lot of investments actually over the mm. past few years on account of uh, the current framework. And yeah, so we'll be hoping that with further clarity, I think that should help to even incentivize uh, greater investments uh, within the sector. And also the issue of partnerships, I think, I think it's also critical uh, because some of the, the, the scale of the investments may be bigger for just a single player. Yeah. So I think there's need for innovative ways and means of mobilizing a capital, mobilizing resources, even from uh, foreign players, a partner with foreign players that may be highly liquid mm -hmm. and try to unlock value uh, within the sector. That's fantastic. That was uh, Prosper Chitambura, uh, Chitambara, who is a finance expert and economist. And of course, we were talking about how real estate is a tried and tested market. And that's where the real money is. But at the end of the day, he's also saying that we need some sort of structures that will be able to support us as we go along the way, such as, you know, conducive policies that will help the real estate market become more uh, resilient and more more lucrative. Well, after the short break, you can join us for the property. My name is Kim Nerera from Rosen Properties, and I'm going to be talking about reasons why it's okay to buy properties that do not necessarily have title deeds in place. So I've had so many situations where a client walks up to me and the first thing they ask me is, does this property have title deeds? And the moment I say no, they're immediately not interested in anything else that I have to say about that property. So I would like to give you a few tips and actually tell you why sometimes it's actually a good thing to buy a property regardless of whether it has a title deed or not. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying just jump into any transaction and be like, oh, Kim said it's okay even if it doesn't have title deeds. No, you still have to carry out the due diligence. There is a checklist of paperwork that needs to be present for any piece of land, even if it doesn't have title deeds. That's your parent deed, your subdivision permit, and a certificate of compliance in cases where the project is already serviced, and then an EMA certificate as well. So outside the due diligence, there are also some benefits that actually come with purchasing land that still has a parent title deed or that is under session. And some of these advantages include land is generally cheaper when you buy it before it's fully serviced. This is because 
the, the moment a piece of land is not fully developed value-wise, it's still a bit on the low side. So you could actually benefit if you invest in land that doesn't have its own title yet and it's still being serviced. You could actually get it at a lower price. And then a few years down the line, five, six years down the line, you sell it off and you get a higher price because it's now serviced. Secondly, you normally have people who are selling land before it's titled accepting payment terms. So this means you can put down a, a certain amount, just part of the payment, and then you then finish your balance over a specified period of time. This is easy on your pocket, and it also gives the developer time to finish servicing the piece of land. So instead of chucking out a huge lump sum of money all in one go, you can actually have the option to pay in bits and pieces before the property actually has title. And then once you purchase land from a development that is still being serviced, it means that by the time it's done being serviced, the units may sell out or the units might have way, way, way higher prices than you bought it for. Meaning when you then decide to sell it, you actually have a lot of buyers that are available looking for that specific piece of land because now it has sold out and they're just those people who prefer buying after the servicing is done. So you, you definitely have a market for whatever you're selling. So that's it from me. And I hope you can take a thing or two from my property. Hey to everyone who joined us on this program of the Real Estate Show, proudly brought to you by Rawson Properties Zimbabwe. As of course, we were talking about why, why real estate matters and why there is so much value in this specific sector. Special thanks to a Prosper Shitambara, who is a finance expert and economist, and Francis Chinjakure, who is from Rawson Properties Zimbabwe, who is the research analyst there. We'll see you 